Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. It was in the middle 70s when we first heard the line, It's Charlie, angels. Time to go to work. From then on, we witnessed Charlie's angels embark on an adventure full of action, drama, bottomless amounts of hairspray, and lots of costume changes. Although the critics hated the show and called it nothing more than jiggle television, it still became a major hit, which turned each angel into a star in their own right. The series aired on ABC from September 22, 1976 to June 24, 1981, with 115 episodes created. The show was created by Ivan Goff and Ben Roberts and was produced by Aaron Spelling. It follows the crime-fighting adventures of three women working at a private detective agency in Los Angeles, California and it originally starred Kate Jackson, Farrah Fawcett, and Jacqueline Smith in the lead roles, with John Forsyth providing the voice of their boss, the unseen Charlie Townsend, as he directed the crime-fighting operations of the Angels over a speakerphone. ABC initially hated the idea of the series. The producers were told that that was the worst idea that they had ever come up with. And the only reason that the show pushed through and went into production was that Spelling had a previous arrangement with ABC which granted him $25,000 for a new pilot script. In the beginning, the show was supposed to be titled The Alley Cats, but one of the stars, Kate Jackson, gave some creative development input and said the show should be entitled Harry's Angels. Harry was supposed to be the name of their mysterious boss, but the producer thought that the title was too close to the detective show entitled Harry O. That's why they decided to change the boss's name to Charlie and the show's title to Charlie's Angels. The guy who originally played Charlie got fired for being drunk. The producers of the show decided to hire veteran actor Gig Young to be the voice of the Angel's mysterious boss. But when he showed up to record his lines, he was too drunk to talk. And that's why Aaron Spelling begged John Forsyth at 12.30 a.m. to do the part before the show's pilot episode was viewed by ABC executives. Forsythe agreed, and he drove to the 20th Century Fox studio in his bedroom slippers to record his lines. The show's main icon of Farrah Fawcett always would get home in time to cook dinner. She, at the time, was married to the $6 million man, that being Lee Majors, before she ever signed her Charlie's Angels contract. That's why she made it very clear that her marriage took top priority in this relationship. She had them add into her contract that she must be let off work every day at 7 p.m. to have time to cook her husband's dinner. The Angels had a really expensive wardrobe budget for the show. All those fashionable clothes that they wore didn't come cheap. Each episode had $22,000 that was budgeted for the wardrobes of the girls. This huge budget was because the girls didn't wear just one outfit. They changed at least eight times during that hour. Only Farrah Fawcett posed for a poster. All three of the girls were asked to do a promotional poster for the show, but only Farrah Fawcett agreed to do it. That poster sold over 12 million copies long before the show's pilot episode hit the TV screen. The red bathing suit that Farrah Fawcett used in that photo shoot is in a museum. It's now part of the Smithsonian's American Cultural History collection. But as popular as Farrah Fawcett was, 
She only stayed for one season. Considering that the show was one of the best-rated shows during that time, ABC was really mad about her sudden decision to leave the series, and they sued her for breach of contract. All along, ABC wanted to show the person that was the voice of Charlie. ABC executives continually pushed for an episode where they would reveal Charlie's face. But the show's producer couldn't be persuaded to do this. John Forsyth was the highest paid actor on the series. For a man that was supposed to not even be a part of the show, he ended up being the highest paid actor there on an hourly basis. He didn't even have to appear in an episode. All he had to do was record his voice. And that didn't take very long for each episode making him the highest hourly paid person on the series. Jacqueline Smith, in her role on the show, was amazing. In her role as Kelly Garrett, she was the only angel to last the entire series. But there was some controversy between season one and season two with her appearance. Everyone thought that she had had a little bit of plastic surgery done on her face. Everyone thought that because her eyes seemed bigger and more round in season one, and they all of a sudden seemed smaller and more almond-shaped in season two, viewers thought that she had a mini brow lift done. But despite this being the way of Hollywood, Jacqueline Smith never went under the knife, and she says she doesn't believe in it, and she doesn't believe in fillers or Botox being used on her face at all, something Hollywood stars are notorious for using. But the one thing she does use is her own fat. She's had these injections of her own body tissue done to her face in what she has described as a pretty uncomfortable procedure. Despite having lived through three divorces and a devastating breast cancer diagnosis, she defies all with her stunning and youthful appearance as she nears 80 years old. This lady is truly remarkable looking today, just as she was in the 70s. She attributes most of her long-term good looks to bucking the Hollywood system and their routine cocktail of drugs that actresses use to keep their youthful appearance. She cites that her family morals just wouldn't let her do that. It went against her upbringing. Well, I have to tell you, the way she's done it really worked because she's absolutely gorgeous at this age. Take a look back at Charlie's Angels. It'll bring back the memories of the 70s. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.